Welcome to Five Strike Weekly, an unlikely win, Leagues Cup, and our homegrown soul to Chelsea. We're getting all that and more coming up. Before we get into it, become part of the notification squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button on YouTube. Welcome to the show, Five Strike Fam. I'm AJ, and Atlanta United, they came back for the first time in quite some time to win against the reigning champs. So, Atlanta United beat Columbus Crew 2-1 at the Benz in a pretty contentious one, uh, at least in the stands anyway. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we'll get into all of that. But before we do, much love to our Patreon members and specifically you guys, Gavin, Jordan, Niall, Andrew, and Chris. Much love to you all. But, uh, yeah, let's get into the match review then. So, yeah, Saturday night, Stan Gregerson decided to score his first goal for the Five Stripes. And uh, he, very little bit of time later, did so again for the first brace in his entire career. So, amazing from the Norwegian. But... Yeah, uh, it definitely started where uh, where the supporter section was, uh, yeah, silently protesting for the entire uh, fan base, uh, and essentially did not do any chance uh, except for "Don't price us out." Uh, and yeah, if you want to hear more about that, uh, you can go to our live post-match fan reactions video. I'll link it in the uh, card above if you're watching on YouTube. But uh, yeah, we say a lot of uh, what's going on there, so we won't double up and say too much here. But uh, yeah, essentially, yeah, there is some kind of misconstrued uh, kind of thoughts where people are thinking that the supporter section is, <laughs> uh, you know, the uh, the capos, the people in there are the only. Uh, that they're complaining essentially only about the supporter section. It's about the entire stadium and the raising and rising costs of uh, things inside the supporter section, the uh, 200s, 100s, uh, the club section, where essentially the value of what we're getting is essentially not commiserate to what is going on on the pitch. Where, for context, apparently 3252 at LAFC, that section, and uh, many other sections apparently, they have frozen the ticket prices for 10 years. So, if that were the case, it's not like it's unprecedented. And I think you've seen the LAFC uh, success that they've had, and yeah, you know, if you weigh it against us and theirs... And, you know, their success versus, uh, you know, the rising ticket prices, well, it's completely night and day. But either way, let's get into this uh, this match review. And, yeah, of course, Stian Gregerson didn't play against uh, and the NYCFC in the midweek because of the yellow card accumulation. Uh, so he was definitely raring to go. Uh you know, didn't have the uh, the fixture congestion as well. So, yeah, he was definitely, he had all the ups in his legs to be able to uh, to get the brace in this match. But, uh, yeah, the, uh, the lineup, uh, you know, it could have looked several different ways, but uh, Ronald Hernandez uh, was the left back. Caleb Wiley, of course, uh, we will talk about later in this episode. Uh, and Pedro Amador didn't get the start. Uh, he was in the bench or on the bench, but didn't uh, get any t game time. Brooks Lennon was the right back. Derek Williams, St Stian Gregerson were the center backs in the four-man back line. Fortune, Slish, and Muyamba were in the midfield with Saba, Tiare, and Silva, the forwards. So it definitely was interesting that we went a little bit more attacking than we normally do against Columbus Crew. But at home, it seems like something that we are wanting to possibly kind of dispel is that we, 
yeah, we had our we had our chances coming into this match, and uh, in the first half, it seemed like we created the chances, half chances, full chances, to possibly get the uh, the first goal, but it wasn't the case. We were not clinical. We created some decent looks as well but a little bit ponderous in the box. It just is that sometimes we need to be more confident and take it first time. But some of these players also, well, Tiare hasn't really started a whole ton. I think he started because of a bit of uh, fatigue probably in Rios's legs. So him starting... He's not fully acclimated completely, especially with the 11. They hadn't really played together either very much. So the very fact that we were able to come back and win this match, I think, is something incredible. But uh, yeah, Columbus, they were able to get the first goal. 36 minutes. It was a parried shot that... Unfortunately, Brad Guzan couldn't get the rebound, and Diogo Rossi, he was waiting. He knocked it in to give them the 1-0 lead. And, yeah, it is uh, somewhere in all of this, it's a matter of, okay, you know, this one, Brad Guzan maybe could have caught, but it is also on the defense to make sure to clear the danger and make sure the attack uh, from the other side, doesn't get all the way into the box to begin with. But, yeah, Columbus, uh, I mean, I think we noticed they were really good on the ball, and it really seemed like Valentino was trying to prioritize the transitional moments and also being disciplined because there was a lot of moments where we had to suffer. But in the second half, there was... The two set pieces that we were able to capitalize on and yeah all of Stian Gregerson Norwegian air air Stian all six foot three of him he timed a very well uh, corner kick by Saba and it was thumped in uh, pretty much came from where it came from and uh, yeah one one in the 60th minute in traffic too, Gregerson definitely able to overpower all of the people around him, and it's almost a almost a four on one at uh, you know for the the first goal, and it's his first MLS goal, and uh, yeah the the second goal for LA United came shortly thereafter. Uh, it was a 60 minute for the equalizer, 76 minutes in what looked like deja vu with Saba. Again, another corner kick. And yes, the Norwegian headed it and froze the uh, the keeper, Hagen. And yes, it's incredible. The celebrations are palpable. And yeah, the stadium woke up. And yeah. Uh, on a note against, or not against that, but on a note about the energy from the supporters section is that apparently the Gulch, the umbrella supporters group for all the supporters groups of Atlanta United, did mention that it was mentioned to the players that they would be silent. Uh, so basically mirroring what the entire stadium usually is like. And, you know, the celebrations when there was a goal, the celebrations when there uh, were good things happening, definitely were still happening. So, I mean, it is, uh, w it was only for this one match. Uh, they will be business as usual, but hopefully the front office understood and heard the message about what were the requests, which, yeah, you know, with the, the Gulch's request, I, I'll definitely read that out as well. 
because it is something that uh, I feel like some people maybe didn't fully understand, but you know, whether you agree or disagree, that's a completely different thing as well. But uh, so uh, they essentially said that uh, if you notice a quieter supporter section today, some members of the all volunteer pit have elected not to participate in the usual capacity to demonstrate how the experience could be affected by the ticket price increase. We encourage supporters to treat each other with the same courtesy and respect each week, regardless of how individual chooses how any individual chooses how to uh, to show that support today. Uh, and as well, uh, they mentioned we as the Gulch on behalf of the independent supporters groups, our memberships, and all supporters are deeply troubled by the price increases going into the next season that are inconsistent with the team performance and stated front office goals. As front off, or as fr frustration grows amongst supporters, we see these price increases as being extremely detrimental to the community we've worked so hard to foster and enrich by season, season by season. The annual price increases over the past years have had a twofold effect on the supporter section, where the uh, the section is increasingly filled by fans looking for affordable tickets but not keen on the experience on the supporter experience while simultaneously supporters who provide that experience have been priced out we all love this club we purchase tickets merchandise and travel to away games we have seen minimum 56 increase a 56 percent increase in ticket prices from 2017 to present day in the supporter section alone Season ticket holder benefits continue to disappear and performance on field is lacking, making the continuous price increases difficult to understand. We'd like to formally propose the following as a solution for all supporters to the front office of Allen United. A five-year freeze on ticket prices, a second ticket exchange window at the 40% mark of the season, a one-time option for each founding member to opt back into season tickets at their founding member status and pricing, an additional ticket payment plan for season tickets over a long period or over a longer period of time. So uh, I encourage you to go to the ATL Gulch Instagram to check all that out. Uh, but essentially, yeah, if uh, you feel like that affected the atmosphere, then, well, you know, that kind of was the point. And it's something that's been felt for a very long time, but finally voiced. And if you want to bring politics into it, well, that's your prerogative. But I feel like this is a, a thing that is essentially aimed to help everybody. And again, if you want to pay more for tickets, you can happily do that. But, you know, people that are wanting change and not accepting pretty much mediocrity and paying more for mediocrity, well, yeah, those type of people are going to say something about it. And... You know, if you have something uh, against that and, uh, you know, want to say to the front office, hey, yes, raise the ticket prices and make me pay more, then you should have the right to do that as well. But anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, for the rest of this match, basically, yeah, we were uh, able to hold on to the 2-1 victory. And yeah, I mean, it was uh, the first win since the 2-1 victory over Toronto FC at home on uh, June 29th. So it's been some time, about three weeks in that sense. But uh, yeah, it, uh, Valentino said after the game, the collective work rate together was really good, but it has to be like that every game. That is the challenge for them. They've shown me that they can do it. Now I'm going to demand it every game. So... Yeah, hopefully that can be uh, the case from the squad. But uh, yeah, there was also the uh, sense that uh, the play from the last match uh, from kickoff was a design play, was a uh, play from the training grounds. And Liam Karan, the goalkeeper coach, apparently did design it. It wasn't executed completely to plan, but... It was a goal. Now these were also uh, from the corner kick routines, definitely a designed goal as well. And so it's something that I've been clamoring for and we finally are doing it much, 
much, uh, I think, praise should go to Liam Curran and the squad for being able to execute it. And Valentino for, I think, seeing that uh, th there was a need for us to do these things. Because it really didn't seem like all season that we were really kind of planning out our, our dead ball situations, our set pieces. And it was definitely strange. Definitely strange that uh, it took this long to score from a set piece this season. But, uh, yeah, you know, our first uh, first and second set piece goals from this season, it's insane. That's uh, We're over half the season in. So, definitely strange indeed. But, uh, yeah, so uh, as far as, uh, you know, kind of the stats from this match, I mean, the possession... 35 for us, 65 for Columbus Crew, and you know the passing accuracy 80%, 88% for the Crew. That's exactly what uh, Valentino has been trying to to do lately: is essentially eschew possession and be more dangerous with the ball. And I think we were able to completely do that with really very few of the. Very few of the possession uh, against the the best side in MLS, you know, at least uh, according to winning MLS Cup. So, you know, definitely amazing stuff. So uh, that does it for the match review. So let's get into the news. And the Eastern Conference looks like this. And LA United are in ninth place back in a playoff spot. Negative uh, one goal difference uh, right underneath Toronto in 8th and uh, Philadelphia in 10th. You know, that's just how close the uh, bottom half of the Eastern Conference is. There are a lot of spots still up for grabs. So definitely a lot to play for still in the remaining matches. But uh, yeah, not too many matches, of course, as well. It is the MLS All-Star game break. And it is... As well, League's Cup coming up very, very soon. So, yeah, very much so. Uh, you know, you have other competitions kind of, uh, kind of taking uh, the spotlight in a sense. But uh, right after that, it will be, of course, a back to MLS play. But uh, apparently, a player that was invited by Garth Lagerway and LA United and was at the match on Saturday was Fowler and Balligan, a uh, you know, of course, a striker for the U.S. men's national team. And, uh, you know, it's very interesting because uh, with all of that, you know, he is a very sought-after player to one degree. But he also is a player that's, uh, you know, at 23 years old. Uh, playing for AS Monaco, well, you know, there are people that are pontificating. Will he be able to be got by... LA United, I think he's just only visiting the, uh, the States a little bit and not actually being sought after. But if he was, I mean, what a player. 23-year-old uh, and, you know, lots of talent. But I think this would not be the move that he would want, probably, at this stature in his career. But, uh, yeah, moving on from that, Gregerson and Saba make the MLS team of the match day. Congratulations uh, to Steon Gregerson for making the 11. Saba made the bench. And uh, yeah, with that, those two assists, Gregerson with the two goals, definitely well-deserved. Uh, next bit of news, LA United announced that they transferred uh, Aiden McFadden to Louisville City FC uh, for a an undisclosed fee. Uh, it's a permanent transfer, and he hadn't been on loan with the USL Championship side since April. And, uh, yeah, the club exercised the purchase option. So, uh, yeah, best of luck to McFadden at Louisville SC, uh, Louisville City FC, rather. And, uh, yeah, it definitely seems like that's probably a little bit more of his level, unfortunately. Um, yeah, it didn't really get the, uh, ultimately, the playing time that uh, maybe would kind of springboard him to an MLS-level player. But uh, next bit of news... Alexi Mirinchuk update. Uh, according to Tuto Atlanta, 
they reported that finally Mirinchuk could accept the Enlai United offer, uh, but apparently the uh, 12 million dollar euro uh, or 12 million euro uh, kind of agreement has been uh, agreed upon between Atalanta and LA United, but uh, according to uh, Tuto Mercato, uh, they said that apparently Mirren Truck uh, is not really wanting to leave. He wants to continue to play in Atalanta, but it seems like his replacement has already been brought in from Celtic. So it definitely is interesting. He, uh, he wants to fight for his place there, but I'm not sure that they have the same uh, designs for him. So it is definitely another transfer saga for LA United. And, you know, of course, it just so happens to <laughs> kind of be that way. But, uh, yeah, so Muren Truck, if he is to decide he wants to come, then, well, it's a player that maybe doesn't really want to be here so if he doesn't really want to be here I'm not really sure I want him here but uh, yeah uh, let's move on to the <coughs> excuse me let's move on to the uh, big permanent transfer so El United announced that Caleb Wiley has been permanently transferred to Chelsea of course uh, big Premier League club uh, in England, and uh, apparently, according to Fabrizio Romano, it was for a eight and a half million euro fee, which equates to just under eleven million dollars. Uh, it is, I think, the fifth highest transfer fee out for an Atlanta United player, and he will very likely go on loan to RC Strasbourg in uh, France, but. Right now, he is in uh, Paris, of course, for the Olympics with the U.S. men's national team, along with former uh, five-stripe Miles Robinson, of course. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, the kid from Morningside in Georgia, uh, yeah, has made his way all the way to uh, Chelsea Football Club in really a short span of time in really just a few years. And... Uh, really essentially in six years uh, has gone from the ball boy at uh, the MLS Cup finals uh, in 2018 uh, you know getting a photo taken with uh, Joseph Martinez when he's shorter than Joseph Martinez I mean Caleb Wiley uh, you know has just grown before our eyes and uh, scoring in his debut uh, just being a really an incredible uh, young player, teenager, that uh, earned his starting spot at left back for Atlanta United. It truly is uh, kind of a, uh, a thing to behold for probably uh, not only uh, many soccer players in Atlanta, but of course also the academy uh, for Atlanta United, that there is a pathway uh, from the academy to uh, you know, the best league in the world in the English Premier League. But, uh, yeah, really incredible. And Caleb Wiley hopefully does not uh, uh, stay in the uh, the lone army for Chelsea. Uh, wish him all the best in being able to uh, maybe possibly play for, uh, you know, the first team there. But, uh, yeah, he definitely has it all to do. It will be uh, a tough road but he has all the talent, and if he can put it all together, uh, it's quite possible that uh, he might be able to uh, make waves in England sometime soon. But uh, yeah, always a five-stripe forever, a homegrown for Atlanta United. Uh, so last bit of news, Atlanta United 2 fell on the road to uh, crown Legacy FC 2-1. One. On Sunday, uh, Nick Firmino, he scored the lone goal, while newcomer Rodrigo Neri made his professional debut. So, uh, congrats to Neri uh, on that. But, uh, yeah, that pretty much is the news, and it gets us into the match preview. And League's Cup has arrived, and 
Uh, yeah, our first match is, of course, against DC United. Our second match will be against Liga MX side Santos Laguna. But uh, yeah, the first match will be Friday, 8 p.m., uh, July 26th at the Benz. And uh, yeah, uh, with the rules, basically regulation wins count as three points. There are no draws. Uh, each team will repeat uh, will receive one point if the game is tied after uh, 90 minutes. The winner of the subsequent penalty shootout will win an additional point. So basically, uh, it being no ties, somebody has got to get the other point. Uh, so the group stages will go something like this. Columbus Crew uh, and Club America, they basically, uh, because of, uh, yeah, basically being the winner of the MLS Cup and uh, Club America having the most points across Clausura and Apertura 2023, they will be able to bypass and uh, yeah, be have automatic spots in the round of 32. Uh, so, also each club will play a minimum of two matches in the group stage. Uh, the top two teams from each group will advance to the round of 32. Uh, the group assignments were uh, pretty much ranked and uh, pretty much kind of weighted by the cumulative 34 matches and the 2023 Clausura and Apertura tournaments in Liga Mekis. So, uh, yeah, that determines why we are playing DC United and Santos Laguna. But DC United, they're 13th in the Eastern Conference right now. Last match, they played a friendly against Celtic FC and lost 4-0. And uh, their previous match against us, we won 1-0 against them at Audi Field. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, the... Uh, the recent results against them haven't been pretty. Uh, they've won four, we've won one, and only drawn one. So, uh, yeah, you know, we know that Christian Benteke is their danger man. Uh, Ted Ku Di uh yeah, they uh, are the the strike partnership up top, and definitely have been able to uh, do some. <laughs> Very annoying things to uh, a lot of teams in the league, uh, as Benteke is uh, one of the front runners for the Golden Boot. But uh, yeah, of course, last time at the Benz, he did score that headed hat trick against us. So that is what we are absolutely trying to prevent from happening this time around. Uh, but you know, they're a side that uh, you know playing with the the two strikers up top. Uh, they also play three men at the back normally. Uh, with wing backs and uh, yeah, you know they're toiling in uh, where they probably have been predicted, uh, but they still are a dangerous side in attack. Uh, yeah, most of the pundits have them finishing as low as 15th and as high as 10th. But essentially, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, a side that can be got, but they did take care of business. At the Benz, uh, of course, during Gonzalo Pineda's reign. But, uh, yeah, you know, they're a team very, very strong aerially. Uh, good in set pieces. Uh, if you score against them, they're not that good coming from losing, coming back from losing positions. But, uh, yeah, they're also a team that doesn't really like to keep the ball. And, yeah, not really, really good at uh, defending against counters either. So, uh, it's definitely going to be an interesting match where we're at home, but we don't really want the ball, uh, you know, in the uh, the recent times under Rob Valentino. So it will be a game of who wants the ball less and uh, essentially who can attack the other opposition's goal as quickly as possible. But uh, getting into the unavailable players, uh, very likely... Uh, for them, Ugo Bakarac, uh, he's out with a knee injury. Will Trapp, uh, still probably out with a hamstring injury. Clint Irwin, probably out with a groin injury. DJ Taylor, out with a hamstring. And Moises, uh, or Moses Nyman, uh, questionable after suffering a knock in training uh, before the last match. Uh, for LA United, Noah Cobb, Edwin Mascara are likely the players that are still out. Caleb Wiley, of course, has been moved on so it gets us into the predicted starting 11 and yeah 
Uh, Guzan probably will start this match. Could be Josh Cohen. Maybe he's the cup keeper, but, uh, you know, really unsure. I think it's probably going to be Guzan. But, uh, yeah, for the uh, starters for the back line, I think it's uh, in center back. Uh, I think, you know, keeping Gregerson and Williams together there is probably the move. I think we would probably... Uh, not have to play a three-man back line and get a little bit more attack in there. So uh, I think it's only going to be a four-man back line. Uh, Lennon, of course, is the right back. I think Pedro Amador gets uh, maybe the, the first minutes here and maybe Ronald Hernandez comes in later on in the match to, uh, to spell him a little bit. So we'll see. Maybe it's the other way around uh, where Amador gets a little bit of match fitness uh, later on in the second half. So we shall see. But uh, into midfields, I think uh, it might be a little bit where uh, you know we get possibly some of the some of the more uh, veteran uh, heads in here. Uh, meaning, I think Dax McCarty starts this match uh, along with Schleich and uh, Tristan Muyamba, uh, you know, rounding out the midfield trio and getting into the wings. I think it's obvious uh, there where it's Saba and Silva. Uh, you know, I think we, we have to play, you know, our strongest 11, I think, in this to uh, to try to advance in the League's Cup. But uh, I think Daniel Rios returns into the striker position. Uh, Jamal Tiare uh, unfortunately wasn't able to score a goal. So I think, uh, yeah, Rios has been on a bit of a hot streak lately. I think he returns up top uh, being able to uh, link up or play a little bit more from the striker position. So, what do you guys think? Let us know what your starting 11 looks like in the comments below. But that gets us to the score prediction. I think it's a 2 1 win, actually. I think we've been uh, buoyed by some of the positive results lately. And against DC United at home, we absolutely need to take care of business. Both of these games, essentially being at home, you know, also against Santos Laguna, we have to win these games, and I think we should and could. And uh, yeah, maybe uh, Gregerson is able to get another one, uh, possibly Daniel Rios as well. Uh, so we'll see, but I'm predicting a 2-1. What do you guys think? Let us know below. But guys, that is the episode there and there then. The, uh, pretty much the, uh, besides that, <laughs> is uh, the question of the day. And so the question of the day is, how do you, how well do you think we will do in the League's Cup? Let us know in those comments below what you guys think. Looking forward to what you have to say. So, guys, that is the episode there and there. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I've been AJ. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Let's go!